Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, happy Friday. Um, you know, I watched back the last video and I realized I kind of felt like I should have shown a little more Sylvester. -y. We have so many comic book fans that come to my channel and um yeah, you know, I watched it back and and I had just gotten that new Disney book and that really was the intention. I kind of got on a sidebar and I was talking about how I um I look at these in the morning for about a half hour before I start my day. Um when I'm waking up and just kind of waiting to kind of like run errands and stuff like that, I've got about 30 minutes to, to kill. And, uh, yeah, it was like, oh man, I should have shown a little more of the Mark stuff. So let's, we're going to look at one full issue. We're going to look at issue 31 of Wolverine. This is one of my favorite, favorite issues. Um, beautiful girl, but look how loose it is. Wolverine looks awesome, but like look at his face. It's all like broken lines and suggestion, but it's solid 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 These guys are super cool Okay, so anyway, so we start here in this like a uh, kind of bar Great very very Buscema inspired this panel it reminds me a bit of the first issue of um, John's run which is this is the second book. I think yeah, this is this one. So this is Marvel Essential 2. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, it, kinda, it, it starts out very, very similar to um, the Buscema book. And it looks a bit like it. And uh, it was kind of interesting. The, um, the other night I was go oh, I went to Wikipedia and I was looking up Mark. Cause I was kind of curious about, like, I have a few of his first early, early books. Um, I have a What If... Um, Submariner, something or other, and uh, what is it, like a kung fu comic that he did? It might be Masters of Kung Fu. There was a, there was a few that he did pretty early on. He did uh, like four issues of Spider Man. I want to say Web of Spider Man. I could be off on that, but anyway. But uh, I saw a couple of other things that he had done, and man, he he was always just so good. But um, this is one of my favorite Wolverine issues there's a couple this one's really good oh i showed the monkey on the other one okay so let's yeah i just i can't get over how how solid the work is but yet um everything is like these like fractured lines it's crazy that's really cool awesome panel Oh, I always love this page. I had made a photocopy of this page and had it hanging up, I think at Wildstorm, for a long time, actually. I don't know why. I always liked, I liked the, this panel in particular and then this. Another thing I was thinking about with Mark, too, is, like, um, you know, we were talking about uh, reference, and one of the books that he had to draw... Oh, he did... Uh, a Marvel graphic novel for, oh man, I'll never remember the name of the character. Shoot, it's like, anyway, if you Google it, he did a Marvel graphic novel in like 1984, and um, it's a long book. It's like 60 pages or something. It just goes on and on and on. But it was pretty reference heavy in terms of meaning like, like research heavy for a penciler, like, they were asking for a lot of locations and artifacts and, you know, buildings. <laughs> I was thinking, like, man, was he, like, running to the library? Because I don't even know what you would do in the 80s to get reference. I assume you saved magazines and stuff like that. But, like, now, you know, someone would go, like, oh, blah, 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 plaza. And you would just Google it and have, you know, 100 pieces of reference, like, right away. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, I don't, I couldn't figure out like how he was able to devote so much time to even just running around and grabbing all that stuff. It must've been such a pain in the ass. It's crazy. So, you know, I had mentioned we have it pretty good now, but we really do. And, uh, oh yeah, this is so cool. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, oh, and then, um, I forgot to add too. So, so for, for Patreon, just so that people know and are aware of this, like when you sign up to my Patreon, I immediately send you, uh, I think it's like 10 videos. So there's unlisted videos that I have, um, that you get access to, even with like a dollar Patreon 
um, tip, and um, you know, like as soon as I get the notification, I'll, I'll drop you a note and send them to you. So it's not a bad deal. And I'll stack more of that stuff um, onto it, so it'll just keep getting bigger and bigger, and it'll be a, a really good deal for people when they when they just like I said, it's just a tip jar for the for the YouTube channel because I have I think 450 some odd videos, and um, the monetization on them is, is just so low. It really I don't make really anything on YouTube, um, but I still enjoy it, and uh, it's a great place. Uh, it's very um, Jorge Savino. It, you know, it was interesting, too, is and I read a really, really short, like, little interview with Mark, and um, he was talking about influences, and, um, like, two, I think, more obvious influences on his work, although you wouldn't maybe see it here, would be, um, he was a big Frazetta fan and Bernie Wrights, and his earlier work, you can see it a bit more, um, the, one of the stories he did was, he did, like, um, a Weird War Tales, he did, uh, like, Ghosts story, and one other kind of, like, house of mystery or something like that and they kind of have more of that vibe um but you can definitely see um oh shoot like there's some neil adams in his stuff i'm trying to think of what else i was seeing it was um oh man who was the other artist a little Kevin Nolan, maybe. I was. I, what I was gonna do is when I was looking at the comics, the first thing I was thinking is I wanted to see where different artists were in their careers at that time, because sometimes you get the lineage messed up a little bit. Meaning, um, you see something and you equate it to like someone else's style, but then you you maybe like cross-reference the dates and then you realize oh okay you know what like they hadn't even done that style yet. It, 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 depending on who the artist is, like some some evolve so. Um, you know, when did Jim Lee start to influence Mark? Because there was definitely a point where I think Jim's work was starting to have an impact on Mark's uh, stuff. Or maybe it was vice versa, you know. Um, but, I mean, definitely the early image stuff, they were fairly similar. But then so many people were kind of similar. They went, man, this stuff is just crazy good. But, um, yeah, so I wanted to revisit this and just kind of pay tribute to, to Mark. Mark's and Dan Green's work because I, I think it's just so it's so awesome. Nice car. Again, you know, look, I mean, he may have lightboxed that from a photo back in the day, but but the reality is, is somewhere he had to go get reference for that car. He wasn't able to pull it up online, um, and, and he may have just drawn it, but but uh, you know, for speed sake. Um, artists do do that, like the light box cars, just to get them down quick, and then you know you draw it out from there. Just get the, the structure down, and then finish it in your style. Oh man, that's crazy. Would be cool if they could do like an artist edition of some of this stuff, but man, the pages are all over. At one point, I was buying um, old X Men pages of Mark and Dan Green on ebay they were super cheap but they were kind of like um not key pages so i was getting them for like 20 bucks a piece um i got like four of them and i kept them for a little while but there was just there was just nothing of interest on them in terms of like cool stuff it'd be like a guy waking up to an alarm clock and um the mailman going down the street kind of pages so <laughs> at some point i think i i flipped them just got, I got rid of them because I have, uh, you know, I compile so much art or come, uh, you know, well, like you figure if you're a productive comic book artist, you might do at least 200 pages a year. So it can, it can add up over, you know, five years. It's a thousand pages of art you have plus photocopies and books. And so I was like, all right, I'm not going to really need these pages. I'll give them to somebody that would appreciate them more. And then I think the last thing that I'll leave you with is make sure you're following me on Instagram because over the next, well, I don't know when, I won't say when, but I'm going to start leaking like um, new art that I'm working on. So it is coming. I'm just kind of deciding. I, I want to make sure that I do it right. And I don't mean the pieces. I mean um, 
how I start to dribble it out because it's it's like I want to be consistent with uh, the POV <laughs> as it rolls out. So there's no doubt what I'm up to. Okay. All right. I'm going to end it there and uh, have a great day. And wait, let's see. What's my thing? Oh, yeah, this is crazy. That's kind of for that ish <clears throat> Oh, yeah, this is kind of a, this was a looser issue. You could tell they were cranking on it. <clears throat> let's see. Oh, yeah, the fish. But, yeah, I mean, the stuff is, it's, <clears throat> it's challenging to learn from. I remember um, way back, like, um, looking at his Cyberforce stuff and trying to, like, kind of extrapolate, like, little, you know, like, learning learning things from it. And it was hard because it's just so... <laughs> the guy's on a crazy level. Like, I mean, look at those sleeves. It's wild. He doesn't leave. He doesn't leave behind a breadcrumb trail for for you to to learn to be able to pull too much from. I like that. Yeah, these. I remember I showed these in the last video. These are nice, man. <clears throat> okay. All right. Have a great weekend, and I will talk to you all soon. Again, I'll have a link to uh, Patreon and then Instagram in the description box, and check them out. Definitely follow me on Instagram because I will start leaking art. Okay. All right. <clears throat>